My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Coming up this morning, Occupy Jubilee House protesters arrested after flouting an injunction to hold the demonstration. More as the action of the police is described as weaponizing fear and intimidation. Also this morning, former Sanitation Minister Cecilia Dapa refutes allegations of owning a real estate company and using her dead brother's accounts to transact business. We have details as she accuses the OSP again of playing to the public's sentiment. Plus, we are a home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Please stay for details. <laughs> Remember, we're also live on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and X at Joy News on TV. My, my personal handle is at Denana Aisha. Let's settle for the details. The police is weaponizing fear and intimidating citizens who want to exercise their right to protest, and that must stop. That is the reaction of private legal practitioner Samson Ladi Anjanini as police arrest all protesters at the Occupy Jubilee House demonstration in Accra today. The pressure group Democracy Hub had previously informed the police about the intention to protest on the Nkrumah Memorial Day picketing the Jubilee House. While the police claimed to have served organized as a court injunction through their lawyers, the group remained committed to protest. And Maxwell Agbagba has been following the protest uh, and just watch this. In, um, here. I remember that yesterday the Ghana Police Service put out a notice saying um, that they filed the court process that stops or prevents um, the organizers from going ahead with their demonstration. The organizers um, had said that they had not been officially served with those court processes, but the Ghana Police Service said it served them through their um, lawyers. So nothing really is happening here at the 37 Trotro Station, which is supposed to be the starting point for the protest. But I have two gentlemen here with me who arrived here who wanted to take part um, in the um, protest. Let's speak to them. Let's find out from them um, what it is like for them at this point. Um, hi, sir. What's your name? My name is Oswald Kabute. Oswald Kabute. Yes. Okay, you were coming to take part in this protest. Yes. And you heard, you heard what happened to um, your colleagues. I heard they have been arrested, but that, that would not stop me from coming. Mm. I was late. I was standing in a circle for like close to 30 minutes and there was no car coming towards this side. Mm. Yes. I, I, I can see I can see the passion with which you speak. Uh, tell me, why are you here to take part in this protest? I'm here to take part in this protest because our future is at stake. Look at the way the country is being run. The borrowing is just anyhow. And you're not seeing what? The effect of the borrowing. The youth are suffering. The youth are dying. When you go to what? The airport. The place is always full. People are packing out. Why? Because there is no future for them here. And I want, I want future for those in the country. I want future for my friends. I want future for my family. I want future for my children. I want future for my children's children. Ghana is for ours. We don't have to go to Europe and America to go and what? Survive. You can survive in Ghana. How are you going to survive in Ghana? By our leaders what? Giving us a better what? Ghana. The promise is that's what? Ghana beyond age. Is that what you are seeing? Is that what you are seeing? This to you, who is sitting at home, what are you seeing? You are suffering. Come, come, let him come. come. I see another. You also, you also come in here to protest? Okay, I'll come back to you shortly. But you've heard that your colleagues have been arrested. So why are you, why are you here? No, no. Come, come. Oh, even if one person has been arrested, even if one person is even left, that one person will go. In as much as democracy is concerned, what matters the most is there is no definition for democracy because the white man who brought the democracy has never defined it but in as much as i am a human being democracy leads me to freedom it leads me to peace so in as much as we don't hold arms we are not armed and anybody arresting anybody that means that that person who has sent anybody to arrest anybody is a dictator i'm a pan-africanist my forefathers who formed the NPP in 1954. If anybody told you that the NPP was formed in 1992, tell that person he's a liar. Okay. There was a party called NPP, the Northern People's Party. What's your name, sir? My name is Afani. I'm a musician. 
okay. a social commentator, a Pan-Africanist, a Kwame Nkrumah advocate, and also a member of the communication team of the ACUP, United African Continental Unity Party. Okay. We are not here to cry in solidarity of the N in the NDC mm. or for the NPP. We are here to cry in solidarity of the ordinary Ghanaian. Mm. Today, Ghanaian children, parents can no longer feed their children. Mm. Well, parents, so, so you see what is happening right now. So please, officers, uh, please, officers, now, um, they're maintaining the process, arresting um, some of the protesters who, who, who came here and said they're going to protest despite okay, please preventing them. Now you can see police officers here. Is that what they signed up for? They are suffering. And they are, they are you can see that. Some of them preventing us from even speaking to um, the protesters who have been arrested. Um, hi, sir. Fruits, come. Fruits, come. They said we should join them. Hi, sir. Can we talk to you? Fruits, fruits, come. Go down, go down. Go down, go down. Come, fruits, come. Go down, go down. He's a media man. Please, officers, um, I think in this gentleman away who said they were going to demonstrate and protest, you know, despite, despite what, you know, the Ghana police service had done earlier, arresting some of the protesters, about 30 of them. Maxwell Agbaba is currently at the Central Police Station where these uh, protesters have been sent to. He joins us live with some updates. Maxwell, what can you report from the Central Police Station? Aisha, um, away from what we witnessed at the um, 37 Trotro Station here, at the Central Police Station, um, many family members of those arrested are beginning to um, arrive here we've also seen um, lawyers of some of the protesters um, arriving here trying to engage um, the police we are told that some of them in fact we have seen some of them in cells here at the central police station um, just about 50 meters away um, the accra regional police headquarters um, some of the protesters are also being kept there for interrogation and we've seen some of their lawyers um, move there trying to engage the police there at the regional police headquarters we're told that we cannot get access um, to the place media people do not have access to the place so it's just the lawyers um, of the protesters who have been arrested but here we've been provided we've been given some um, freedom to carry out our activities and you can see quite a number of media people also standing here together with the family members who are waiting anxiously um, for them to um, interact with the family members who have been arrested we've been told some of them have been asked to um, write statements um, and uh, some of the family members are alleging that they did so um, without in the absence of their um, of their lawyers and they are not happy about that let's speak to some of the family members this gentleman here says um the convener for fix the country oliver bakavoma who was also um, arrested just about an hour ago at the 37 trotro station this is hanko and he's here um to uh he's here to interact with him and see how they can build them uh, hi what's your name adams uh, adams yes thank you adams thank you adams um what are you doing here yeah, but what are you doing here? So far, I'm here for demonstration. I'm part of it. Mm. At the same time, Vama work is my uncle. Yeah. The one that they arrested him. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay, so 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 what are you doing here right now? What I need right now is I I want them to release them. Mm. Yes, please. But were you part of the protest? Yes, please. But you were not arrested? No, please. What? What happened? You escaped? They can't arrest me. Why can't they arrest you? This is a Ghana police service. Yes. Why can't they Forget arrest about Ghana police service. They can't arrest me. Because they had warned you to follow due process. And they said there was a pending court process that prohibits you from um, going ahead with this protest. That you who defied them. That court? Who has served that? Uh, uh, they, they, they said they served your lawyers. Who? You served who? They said they served your lawyers. Which lawyer did they serve? Atuguba and Associates. They never served anybody. Okay, they had to reach Oliver and then later Oliver was not around, so they couldn't serve the letter to Oliver. And so they have not served anybody any letter. And it was just yesterday, around 
two, three that they said they just released the place statement that uh, they have served the people with letter, serve us with letter. Meanwhile, we have not received anything. No, nobody has given us any letter. So which letter are they talking about? Who did they serve the letter to? Yeah, but what's, what's your name? I am Brian. I was spoken before. I'm Brian. Brian. Okay. So what are you also doing here? I am part of the convenience. Okay. I'm part of the convenience. So, so what, 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 are, what are your demands right now? Our demand right now is for them to release the people. None of the people over here has committed any crime. You get it? We are citizens and we have the right to protest. So you can't just come and mass up and be arresting citizens to just for nothing. People exercising their uh, democratic right, you just come and they arrest them, telling them that you serve them a court notice. When did which of the police serve who who, no, who notice? Which of us did they serve a notice? Is it Oliver or who? They never serve anybody any notice. Yesterday, three o'clock, that they just released a press statement that they have served the organizers with a, 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 a court letter. Meanwhile, none of us has received anything. So that one is just a kind of a intimidation they are trying to do to the people, and we do not accept it. So right now, we are telling them to release the people inside over there because none of them have committed any crime. In, 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 in fact, the people who have committed crimes are the ones with the billions of dollars in their rooms, millions of Ghana cities in their rooms, and the people, the numerous scandals and the stealing and TV. Those are the people they have to go and arrest. These citizens have not committed anything, and for that matter, we are calling for their release. If, if, if they are not released, what happens? We have to mass up here. You they mass up here. They are not releasing them for what? They have not committed anything. So why are you still keeping them there? I, 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 have the, I have this pain, like Ghanaians are so timid, we are just sitting down, one person is destroying the whole country and nobody seems not Who is there. destroying the country? Akufo is destroying the country. You are President? Not, you, you don't know, you, you don't know that Akufo is destroying the country. You are telling me? I'm not telling you, you are part of, you are a Ghanaian, I'm, I'm telling you that Akufo is destroying the country, and yeah, you know, you know, yeah. Akufo as a person is destroying the country. During Mohammed's time, people were hitting on the street, rough from demonstrating, but under Akufo the moment you speak up, you are arrested. The moment you open your mouth, you are arrested. Meanwhile, these people are stealing. They are, they, they are, they are stealing. They are destroying the country. And nobody wants to speak. Mm. When you speak, you are arrested. What kind of democracy are you practicing? Look at what uh, uh, this uh, German son, EC, uh, chairperson, one person, EC, uh, one person can shut the whole country up. The whole country, one, they are telling one person to stop whatever she's doing. And no, no, she's not listening to anybody. Peace Council and the rest are all quiet watching these people. So you see, there's a big problem in our democracy. The democracy is being destroyed by Kufado, and we as citizens, we need to resist the oppressor, as stated in the national anthem. We or you and I, we need to resist the oppressor. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. I'll, yeah. I'll come to you on the cracks of the issue. Um, in person, uh, person, I don't know. Who's who can protest with you? I, I, I don't know. Eh, uh, you say, you put wire. And this is time, yes, sir. As you be said, they contain a send and repeat me, you go to my port. And I want to mean you call her. Call her. 64,000 duty. Mahama Tana duty, I say. 35,000. And I say 64,000. And then Padu doesn't send it to me, he didn't press that acro. He says he works at Gapoha and he's talking about high input duties at Ghana Sports. He says uh, now it is, I mean, it's very difficult to clear a vehicle um, from Ghana Sports. He said, um, Toyota Cola, now if you want to clear it from the thousand Ghana cities and he says that wasn't um the case um some years ago and and until now who can demonstrate and yeah no see particular i make a demonstration you know a good for us say or minor where this show or minor was say any Ghana bay or niche before they are into a match or minor minister see we see a good them minister see we see millions of dollars a good them and so won't me to say police and also just in question but when you come to the demonstration, a good father say, Waka Casa Bosha, we are all my own demonstration. When you write, when you write over the demonstration, but and Mahama time, demonstration, be any one man in one man. He's right now, he's talking about um, what he says is high level corruption in the Akufado led government. He says uh, ministers of state are stashing money um, in their rooms and nothing has been done, you know, um, about the situation. And now also, he says, it feels like there's a crackdown on free speech where people are not allowed uh, to vent and speak against um, what um, is happening. Because you may have your bonnet, you have to have a chance to get 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 are not released when the protesters are not released they're going to sleep here they're going to spend um, the night here in fact that was the initial intention of the um demonstration it was supposed to be a three-day demonstration the organizers say it was against high level corruption 
unemployment, which they say has forced many young people to flee the country. You also talked about mismanagement um, of the economy. That was the purpose of the three-day unprecedented um, demonstration or protest uh, that was going to happen at the um, Jubilee House. But now it's botched. It's not, it's not happening. Uh, in fact, when we're coming here, we saw many police officers in... Um, we saw many police officers in um, route gear and crowd control vehicle. They've lined up the streets in front of the Jubilee House, um, still maintaining a presence there because there's the feeling that members of the group can mass up at any time and still go ahead with the protest. Um, let's speak with this lady. Hi, what's your name? Good morning. Hi, good morning. Um, what's your name? I'm not telling you my name. You're not telling me your name? I'm not. Why? You angry? I'm not angry, no. Then why? I don't want to tell you my name. Is that okay? Are you a member of Fix the Country? Am I a what? Are you a member of Fix the Country? Am I a member of what? Are you a member of Fix the Country? What's that? You are not a member. Of what? Okay, well, she initially agreed to speak to us. She told us that she's a member of Fix the Country, but now it looks like she's not ready to speak to us. Um, so yeah, we're not interacting with her. Let's speak to other people um, who are equally angry about the situation here. Many of them who are now massing up um, here um, to uh, to uh, um, to protest, quite understandably, quite understandably, with that, what happened uh, with the lady? Many of them, uh, many of the members of Texas Country who are here, who are protesting, no longer want to be identified because I mean, if you're identified, you can be bundled um, into the police cells. And you saw what happened at the um, Touch Seven Trotro Station, um, where two gentlemen they were speaking to us on camera um, they were arrested by the police and bundled into a police waiting vehicle so that really um is what is happening here even fix the country members are not willing to identify um themselves here at the central police station many of them running away from our cameras those who are brave those who are courageous they are the ones who here um you know speaking to us but let's let's hear from one of the um lawyers he has been in there he was at the Greater Accra um, Regional Police Headquarters. Let, let's hear what's happened. They were arrested in, in batches. The first batch has been dispersed across different cells. I don't know how true that is. Um, I have seen a few of them inside the, the cells here. I am told that um, there are others in, in, in interrogation. I've seen a third batch in the, the Regional Command Barracks. Um, all in all, I can conservatively estimate that anywhere between 50 and 100 people, it could be more, have been arrested by the, the police at the time. What's next? Well, the most important thing is trying to get our clients, you know, released, at the very least, on bail. Um, we don't know how possible that is going to be, but there are two of us here, and I have, I have sent out a message to all lawyers who are interested in defending the rule of law to show up so that we can we can the, that means right now there are only two of us so there's only so much pressure we can bring to bear but the more of us there are here the better so there will be more i know that there are more lawyers on their way we are going to work around the clock to get our clients out of of, of police custody because they haven't done anything wrong there were the third batch of people i was told were told that they were being invited after the first batch and second batch had been arrested the third batch was told they were being invited only for them to come here and be told that they are under arrest and that their phones have been seized. No, 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 no. We haven't heard from them. They're currently in custody and we are working around the clock to, to, to get them out. Have you, have you got the chance to, to see any of your clients? Not the specific client that called me here in the morning. I haven't seen him. Um, we are all quite worried. As you can see, some of their, 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 their friends and colleagues are around. Um, so not that particular client, but yes, I have seen some some of my friends in, in police custody. So we are going to work around the clock to get them out as well. We heard from some of the people gathered here um, that the um, those arrested were made were forced to write statements um, without in the absence of their lawyers. How true is that? I haven't seen anyone that has told me that they were forced to write statements. Um, I have heard that the the leader has been. And because I have no evidence of this, I am cautious with my, my words, but I've heard that the leader has been maltreated inside. Um, but he's a lawyer. Um, That's Oliver Bakavoma. Yes, Oliver is a lawyer. He's, he's, quite, he's quite courageous. I'm sure Oliver will handle himself. And when we get him out, not if, when we get him out, 
we will hear the full story of it and then we will proceed as necessary. So, so um, what timelines are you looking at for we them to get them out today? We want to get them out. We want to get them out. They haven't done anything. It doesn't make sense. Like, why are they in jail? Think about it. Like, can I can I send you in right now? I, I can't do it. Why are they in jail for standing around wearing black t-shirts or for declaring that they want to go on a demonstration? They haven't even taken one step to to. They haven't. What have they done wrong? What have they done wrong? The argument of the police is that um, they, 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 they have a court process um, pending, prohibiting them from going ahead. The court process yeah. doesn't prohibit. You have filed an application for an injunction. That's, that, that's their argument. It is an abuse of the process. You, you cannot... I don't know how to explain this to you, but as lawyers, it is trite knowledge that you cannot use the court to achieve bad faith ends. You can't, you can't do that, you understand? You think the police is abusing the process? Of course, it's an abuse. this is literally the definition of abuse of process. You were, you were notified a month ago, a day to the demonstration, you have filed an injunction. That's an abuse of process. There is no court in this, there is no court that's going to uphold this. It is clearly an abu abuse of process. Like, there is no other way I can explain this to you that's an abuse of process. So if they are not released today, what happens? I cannot answer that. I cannot answer that. But I will say two things. One, I want to send a message out to all lawyers who are interested in defending the rule of law. Ghana Bar Association, all lawyer groups. You should, every lawyer in this country should know that what is going on is wrong. You, you should have an ethical and moral obligation to speak up in times like this. You understand? The Ghana Bar Association was built by people like Sam Okujeto in the, the, the 70s, fighting for fighting against things like this. We're in a democratic dispensation right now. We shouldn't be seeing things like this. You understand? The president, the current president, built his political reputation of holding mass demonstrations. So for this to be happening under his watch, it is unconscionable. It, it, it blows my mind. I, I could contemplate seeing this under any other government, but not under his government. This is, it's, it's like, why, why not under this government? Look up. He is a, he's a lawyer. He came as a human rights lawyer. Why, why under this government? Are you not incredulous? Are you not incredulous? No, I'm asking you. Are you not incredulous? No, I'm asking you. Are you not incredulous? If you don't answer me, I won't answer any of your questions. Are you not? You go, 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 go ahead. No, I won't go ahead. Um, if you don't answer me, I won't, ask, I won't answer any more of your questions. I'm a journalist. I'm supposed to take no, no, a new no, no, job. No, 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 no. Okay, fine. So hypothetically speaking, in the kingdom of Umofia, people have said they are going to, people have said they are going to demonstrate, right? They haven't even moved a step, right? The day before the demonstration, the police files an application for an injunction. The injunction has not, has not been heard. We don't even know the return date. You haven't even served the people, and then you have arrested them. Does this seem like justice to you? You, you. No, don't give me. Mm. Does it seem like no, justice? No, no, let me find over. You mentioned. I don't answer any more of your questions. <laughs> Next question. No, I don't answer any more of your questions. Next question. Well, wow, okay. Well, well, what's, what's, the, what's the name? What's the name? The what's the name? Prince. 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 Okay, yeah. So you just heard from um, Prince, one of the um, lawyers for those arrested. Um, he wants us to answer questions, but as journalists, we we're doing our job here. Um, and sometimes it's difficult to take a position on some of these um, matters. But we still have quite a number of people who are here um, who are angry about what is happening. Let me speak to this lady. Um, hi, what's your name? I'm Sarah. Sarah, are you a member of Fixed Country? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, were you there when they were arrested? I, I got there, but they were gone. They were gone. Okay, so, so what are you doing here? We've come to follow up and see what's going on here. Mm. So what, what is the police telling you? They are not telling us anything. They are, our guys are in cells right now. You can They're in cells right now? You can go and see for yourself. They are not wearing clothes? Right now? They are wearing just singlets in cells. No breakfast, no water, no drink, nothing. And no food. What explanations have they been given um, by the police? They, are not, they said, oh, they are just keeping them. Uh, they were brought here by from somewhere to come and keep them here. That's what they're telling us. Yeah. Nothing. They're not telling us anything important. They're just telling us that. You've been here for like two hours now. Uh, what are you going to do if they're not released now? We'll stay here till they release them. Oh, this we'll is stay here till they release them? Yes, we should get them out. This is illegal. You can't keep them in the cell. Are they criminals? The criminals are there having $1 million in their bedroom. Go for them. Not innocent citizens who are complaining of the bad leadership we are witnessing in Ghana here. We have the right to speak. Anytime we speak, they want to 
see our lips. We are not going to allow them to see our lips. We will talk. We will speak. When these are not going well, we have the right to protest. This is democracy. This is not military dictatorship. It's a military rule that you cannot come out. The democracy should come out and speak when these are not going on right. You cannot see your lips. It's our money we are talking about here. You can't be having this in your bedroom. One million dollars. You know how many roads it will do? And when we talk, you are picking us up for what? So we are here. They should come and release them. You mentioned one million dollars. But the matter is still in court. I mean, court. She's innocent until proven guilty. Really? Okay. But tell me why, personally, why are you taking part in this? Because Ghana is hard. Ghana is very hard. I can't be buying KNK for five cities. What I was buying one city. Ghana is, cost of living is terrible. I have four kids. Taking care of them is terrible. So that's why I'm part. Their school fees or what exactly? Is it? They are living, cost of living, they are feeding, transportation, everything is times five. It's terrible. My salary cannot take care of them. Thank you for talking. You're welcome. Okay, so, um, so yeah, Aisha, a lot of the. Well, hello, Sarah, you said who? Is she ready to talk? Are you. Hi. Hello, are you ready to talk to us? No, she's not ready to talk to us. Um, so that's, that's what's happening here, Aisha, at the Central Police Station. Um, from here, let's see if we can zoom in into um, some of the protesters. Let's see if we can zoom in into some of the protesters who are um, behind, behind cells right now. Um, I can see one of the police officers interacting with one of them. You can see him um, in a singlet um, behind cells. Um, the, some of the members of Fix the Country are saying that they're not going to move an inch from this place until um, they are released. Their lawyers are still here, walking around, hoping that they could get um, get them out because they've still been detained um, by the police. So, Aisha, basically that's what is happening here. And we'll be keeping tabs on this matter. We're going to be here um, to see what is going to happen, uh, what the Ghana Police Service is going to do and what these um, members of Fix the Country and these protesters who are converging at the Tech 7 um, Trotro Station, you know, um, would do. The Maxwell Agbaba, who is following this for us at the Central Police Station, he's been speaking with some protesters who are angry. He spoke with one of the lawyers who is there. He says he's inviting other lawyers who believe in rule of law to also be part of uh, the lawyers who will get these uh, protesters out. We're, we're still there and our cameras are widely opened. We'll be bringing you updates as and when we get it in our subsequent bulletin. But speaking on the Super Morning Show about the arrest, private legal practitioner Samson Ladi Anyanini said the action of the police, which he describes as intimidating, is rather breaking the law. A police publication, a police press release, is not a court process. A police announcement in the public is not the way the law requires that service of a process should be effected on it. In fact, in that publication, they didn't exhibit the court process. And the guys said, and they have continued to say, that they have not been served with any process. You say you said you serve it through their lawyers, and you have now issued another uh, notice, midnight, telling the world that you are refuting their claim that they have not been served and that they wrote to you, and in that letter they wrote to you, that long ago, they had indicated the address of their lawyers. <laughs> so you, you file the process and you serve the copy on the, their lawyers. Look, I know that there are lawyers within the police service. I know that the police have access to lawyers. No lawyer where they are sought, who has gone through LLB training, not law school, LLB training, will give a non-lawyer police IGP or police command or police service that advice that when somebody sends you a letter and says if you want to communicate with me, communicate with, uh, you can send it to my lawyer. That means that if you go to court, the originating process, you should send it on the lawyer. The law does not say anywhere that if you file a process, serve it on the lawyer of the person you have sued. So if, in fact, they have taken a copy to the lawyer, it's a non-service. That's not the way to serve. And when you serve, in fact, and we take for granted that they have served, 
when you serve, you don't issue a notice advising the public that they should ignore any invitation to a demonstration. <laughs> you are not a lawyer for the demonstrator. You don't have a right to advise them. So you can see how they are weaponizing fear so that demonstrators will not be interested in going out there because they are used, they have become aware. We can take the let my vote count situation where some of us advocated until we lost our voices. A similar situation played out. They went there with horse whips and uh, water cannons and tear gas. Mm. They whipped Gabi Asari and the rest of them. Somebody actually lost their eye in the process yeah. and died later. And when the matter came up for the court to hear, the court prevented them and said, you don't go come to the court on the blind side of the people you are looking to injunct. Mm. Now, Kujo, even if you have served them, I just heard you play Oliver say something, and that is the law. If you, Kojo, you want to stop me from doing something, and you go to court, and you file a process, of an, uh, a prohibition process, like an injunction, mm. if you serve me a copy, it doesn't mean that you have power to come and stop me from doing what I'm doing. Mm. You cannot get police Ask the police officers who are, uh, who are there and ask their leaders whether if somebody files an injunction on a land matter against a party and the, the other party is continuing despite the service of the injunction application, whether the police, they can go and support that person to stop the uh, person from doing anything on the property. They won't do it. You know what they will tell you? They will tell you that go to the court mm -hmm. and get an order of the court and ask the court to ask us to help you. Mm -hmm. Until the court asks us to help you, we will not help you. That same law applies. It's not different. So my point here is that these are officers who know, this is a leadership that knows or is expected to have been advised and advised properly and yet has decided to act unconstitutionally, has decided to act unlawfully, has decided to act so shamelessly. And we must not allow this. On this particular day, on the birthday of Osajifu Dr. Kwan in Chroma. We're still live on Joy News Desk, and we'll take a break when we return. There is more, please stay. The Office of the Embattled Former Sanitation and Water Resources Minister Cecilia Dapa has refuted claims made by the special prosecutor. Um, the, in the statement, she denies owing a real estate company and accuses the OSB again of using the media to create public disaffection for the family and prejudice prejudicizing the courts by the sentiments of the public. Samuel Mbura is with our political desk. He joins me via Zoom with details of the latest statement from the office of Madame Cecilia Dapa. Right, so rather Kweku Asante is the one joining us with the details. Kweku, let's get a bit of a background. What were the allegations leveled against her in the recent OSP document we intercepted? So Aisha, specifically, the special prosecutor alleged that Madame Cecilia Dapa used an alias to sell some properties. In particular, they referenced the, 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 the property she sold at Smith Flats at Boteman, uh, sold it for more than 200,000 cities, and used an alias, Nanaya Ode, but appended his regular signature on all the documents in terms of selling that property. But when it was time for the, the purchaser to make payments, it was, at, it was at that point that the agent of Madame Cecilia Dapa informed the, 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 the buyer that this is Cecilia Dapa selling the property. The person paid the amount of money into Madame Cecilia Dapa's account. But if you look at the names that Madame Cecilia Dapa allegedly was using, according to the special prosecutor, to make this case, the special prosecutor says Madame Cecilia Dapa was using Nana Ya Ode and alias to go and do these transactions. And this is what the special prosecutor says 
points to specifics that Madame Cecilia the power was doing a lot of underhand dealings, and because she was a public officer that wanted to beat the laws, she was using aliases to do so. So the special prosecutor has put all that in court documents and put that before the Accra High Court, expecting that on the 18th of October, when this case is heard, the, the court will grant Madame Cecilia the, uh, the OSP's request to confirm the seizure and also confirm the, the freezing of the bank account of Madame Cecilia Dapa. There was also another angle where the special prosecutor alleged that the deceased brother of Madame Cecilia Dapa, and we know that that dead brother of Madame Cecilia Dapa passed on in January of 2022, but the special prosecutor says, as recent as a few months ago, that dead brother's account was still remitting money into Cecilia Dapa's account, 10,000 cities, 17,000 cities, among others. These amounts of money were being transferred from the dead brother's account to Madame Cecilia Dapa's account. But a special prosecutor put all these in the document and filed them. Even before Madame Cecilia Dapa and the lawyers who filed an affidavit in opposition to this, they have put out a statement specifically denying all this. The, the, the sanitation minister, first off, denies using the dead brother's account to transact any business. She, she contends that the special prosecutor has not been able to provide any evidence to this effect and that these are just mere allegations meant to turn the public against Madame Cecilia Dapa, who, is, who, who the lawyers and the, the office believe is a conscientious public servant. They also go to the specifics of the real estate business. And again, Madame Cecilia Dapa denies the specific account of the special prosecutor. What we now wait, since Madame Cecilia Dapa has now denied all this, is to put together an affidavit in opposition to the special prosecutor's application before the High Court currently. And then we can get the court to make a determination. And so the showdown will be the 18th of October when the special prosecutor's lawyers, together with that of Madame Cecilia Dapa, will meet in court. And then the court will be expected to make a judgment on that. Mind you, the first time the special prosecutor went to court, he did not succeed. The court did not grant the freezing order. The special prosecutor says he has now put together more evidence and put that before the court and expects that the court will grant the order. Mm. Kweku, let's now look at the accusations and what the response has been. Does a statement deny all of the OSP's allegations? Categorically, the, the statement from Madame Siadapa is clear that a special prosecutor is only putting together evidence or half truths that will prejudice the minds of the ordinary Ghanaian person against Madame Cecilia Dapa. Madame Cecilia Dapa, this statement contains that these allegations are not only inaccurate, they are just concocted, put together to ensure that you give a, a dog a bad name before you hang it. And Madame Cecilia Dapa, of course, they will have their day in court to try and refute these allegations, both he, or she, the husband, who have all been at the receiving end of the special prosecutor in the documents that she has filed, that they have filed in court. And specifically, Madame Cecilia Dapa says all these allegations, and one may say that maybe some of the allegations may be true, that is why Cecilia Dapa is not responding to them in the statement. But Cecilia Dapa responds specifically to their concerns about owning a real estate company, selling them using aliases, and also responds to this allegation that the dead brother's account was still remitting money to, to, to her. She says these are all the makings of the minds of the officers of the special prosecutor meant to give her a bad name, and they are simply not accurate. Kwekwa Sansei is with our legal desk. He brought us updates of the Cecilia Dapa OSP uh, banter. We'll take a break on Joy News Desk. When we return, we'll bring you the very latest coming from the world of business. The Ghana Association of Bankers is urging customers of banks to prioritize the protection of their personal data against cyber fraud activities. The Chief Executive Officer of the Ghana Association of Bankers, John Iwa, speaking on the sidelines of a sensitization program for players in the banking sector on the building of a cyber resilient banking sector in Accra, indicated the fight against cyber fraud begins from the diligence of individual customers. There's more in this report. Cybercrime activity is a major concern in the financial
financial sector. In the first half of 2023, cyber fraud activities led to direct financial losses of $4.3 million, equivalent to 49.5 million Ghana cities. The reported cyber fraud activities represents only a fraction of the cases brought to the attention of government organizations. The chief executive officer of the Ghana Association of Banks, John Ewa, advised customers to be vigilant in handling their data. You know, most of the cyber breaches that we experience are due to you know, personal compromises here and there, you know, negligence here and there, and sometimes personal security that we don't take very seriously. It's an ecosystem. No matter how prepared a bank is, if you write your PIN number in your diary and somebody sees your PIN, what can the bank do to prevent this? He has your PIN, he has your debit card or credit card. He has everything, he has access to your account. So all we are saying is all the players, together with all the third party uh, service providers who plug into our systems, we can, we said, we say, we are as strong as the weakest link within the ecosystem. So it's not just about the banks, but even fintechs that are plugging into bank networks, government organizations that are plugging into bank networks, customers whose data we are holding and who use financial, digital financial services, all have to be aware and you know take personal cyber uh, security very seriously. He also assured the association is putting measures in place to ensure Ghanaian banks are cyber resilient. You can't stop the cyber miscreants from attacking you. What you can do is to be, be very prepared. And uh, preparedness is true for us such as this, so that we learn from each other. As I said, you don't know what next the next cyber miscreant is planning, but as you come together, something that one bank has suffered, which you are yet to suffer, you are better able to put structures around it and make sure that your infrastructure is responding to the threats you know, of, 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 of the time. Of course, um, as banks, we have invested very heavily in all the um, um, uh, infrastructure that is needed to protect. But you cannot say, I have arrived. You know, you have to be ever prepared. And as emerging threats come, you need to have the systems to also protect your situation from falling into the hands of these cyber miscreants. The workshop was organized by Digital Jewels Africa, a leading IT company in Ghana. It brought together top executives in the banking space to explore how banks can deploy technology to fight cybercrime and protect the data of their customers. Adoduyin Odunfa is the chief executive officer of the Digital Jewels Africa Limited. Very simply, there are three real will, three key wills. Technology, you need to have the right technology. You need to configure it correctly so that it's secure. You need to ensure also that your processes have the right controls so that you know people can't do the wrong thing. So for example, a simple thing like segregation of duties. One person doesn't start and conclude a transaction. People have to go at, on leave at appropriate times. Your access control processes have to be sound, just for an, as an example. And of course, your people. And oftentimes in cybersecurity, we say people are the weakest link. So the reason why a lot of information security breaches and cybersecurity breaches occur is because of ignorance. So when you make sure that people have the knowledge, then they're not ignorant anymore and they, are, they cannot be easily attacked by people with mischievous or malicious intent. Some of the participants who spoke to join you shared their thoughts on how the training will impact their businesses. So when you're managing cybersecurity, it's very important you bring all disciplines on board so that you disseminate the information down there and it doesn't seem so technical to people and so confusing to people. Cyber security is now a business risk, okay, because if business is going out there to make money and the money is going to be siphoned out of cyber incidents, then what is the point being in business? So this program is very good. It's been very interesting so far, and we believe it's going to help businesses uh, generate more profits by reducing a lot of cyber incidents. Prince Kwame, could guess report read to you.
Businesses have been entreated to develop a strategy to ensure sustainability in their operations. This, according to some stakeholders, could also reduce negative environmental impact resulting from the operations in a particular market. According to Global President for the Bologna Conclave, Dr. Olumide Emmanuel, corporate sustainability is key to building transgenerational wealth and strong organizations. He spoke to Joy Business at the launch of a two-day fully residential VIP event on wealth creation. It's all a function of the mind, because most of the time you find that, that most businesses do not transcend the third generation. Most of the time, the first generation that starts a business is a pioneering and generating generation. So they pioneer, they do a lot of stuff to start the business. But by doing that, by the time they raise their children, their children grow up with a maintenance mindset. Oh, let's maintain what daddy and mommy has done. Let's maintain the legacy of daddy and mommy. But you don't build sustainability with a survivor mentality and you don't build sustainability with maintenance mentality. By the time we get to the third generation, they become an entitled mentality, and that's why it doesn't go beyond the third generation. So what needs to happen is that the first generation should be a generating generation. The second generation should maintain what the first generation has built while generating what needs to be done by reinventing and innovating to reach their own world, and the third generation should do the same. And that's why how things can be done sustainably. And then instead of building businesses around themselves, we're going to teach people about corporate governance, to put corporate governance in place so that it can go beyond you. And that's it for business. And it airs on Sunday on the Joy News channel. That's how we wrap up the bulletin this uh, morning. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Log on to myjoinline.com. There's more of the news and updates of all the developing stories. you find stories including Occupy Jolobi House demonstrators arrested. And you would also find EC doesn't need a new law to decentralize limited voter registration. Don't blame Parliament for your voter suppression efforts. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. See you again at 12.